welcome to 5 Minute History, the show where I explain a historical topic in 5 minutes or less. In today's episode, we cover the Siege of Jadoville, which took place during the Congo Crisis of the 1960s. The early 1960s in the Congo was a period of political upheaval and conflict. It was a proxy war of the Cold War. However, both sides had allies switch sides during the conflict. In 1960, the Katanga and South Kasai provinces of the Congo seceded with Belgian support. At this time, the Congolese government requested assistance from the UN, who sent troops to the country to attempt to keep the peace. However, when it was clear the UN would not help the government in 1960 to crush the rebels, the government decided to request help from the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union promptly sent military advisers and other support. Later that year, a communist group, calling themselves the Free Republic of the Congo, rose up in the east, and the Soviet Union switched its support from the government to the communist rebels. On Wednesday the 13th of September 1961, the UN changed its stance and goes from a neutral peacekeeping force to an ally of the government. The UN launched an offensive, codenamed Operation Morther, against the rebel state of Katanga. Soon after, the rebels realise what is happening. They organise a counterattack against a UN base at the mining town of Jadoville. Stationed at the UN base at Jadoville were 155 Irish soldiers, under the command of Commandant Pat Quinlan. Jadoville was chosen as a target for the attack as it was isolated from the other UN bases. It was over 100 kilometres from the nearest UN base in the area. On the morning of September 13th, 1961, a force of over 3,000 rebels attacked the base. This includes mercenaries from Belgium and France. The Irish UN forces in Jadoville had not been told about the surprise UN attack against the Katangan rebels. This meant that the troops were not fully prepared when the Katangan forces struck back at Jadoville, and although there were some trenches to fortify the area around the base, they did not have enough food, water or ammunition to hold out for long. The Irish forces in the area had an armoured car and 60mm mortars to assist in the defence. The Katangan rebels had 81mm mortars, a French field gun, and air support from a trainer jet fitted with underwing bombs and machine guns. Following a bombardment by the Katangan mortars and field guns, the attack began. The Irish troops succeeded in knocking out most of the Katangan mortars and artillery positions early into the battle. The Irish mortars were so accurate and effective that Katangan commanders had to shoot some of their own men to prevent them from routing. The besieged Irish troops radioed to the UN headquarters. We will hold until our last bullet is spent. Could do with some whiskey. In an attempt to resupply the surrounded Irish, the UN headquarters attempted to transport water in containers via helicopter to Jadoville. However, due to the fact that those containers had been used for petrol beforehand, the water was undrinkable. Although the Irish forces held out for five days against overwhelming odds, with no ammunition or food remaining and being low on water, Commandant Quinlan surrendered the town. Over the course of the five-day siege, over 300 rebels were killed in the battle, and over 1,000 more were wounded. Casualties on the Irish side amounted to five wounded and no lives lost. However, neither the UN or the Irish government acknowledged the battle. From their point of view, the surrender was shameful. It wasn't until 2004 that the Irish government reversed this stance after a full review of the battle, and the reputations of those men were restored. If you would like to know more about the Siege of Jadoville, I would recommend checking out the Battle of Jadoville book by Michael Whelan, and I will leave a link to it in PDF form in the description and the 2016 movie, The Siege of Jadoville, which is available on Netflix. Although I would not normally recommend a movie for historical accuracy, this is an exception, as all major details are correct. Only small things, such as the weapons used and the colour of the uniforms, are wrong.
Thank you for watching this episode of 5 Minute History. If you've enjoyed, please consider subscribing to the channel for more similar content in the future.